I know it's been a while since I last posted a video and I had intended to show this one off about a month ago but I ran into file corruption issues with the video and the holidays and all sorts of stuff this radio here is the Canadian Marconi Company model 488 and to those of you that collect transistor radios or just watch my channel the design of this set should look fairly familiar to you because this radio is a license built copy of the Emerson model 888 the original model 888 before it became the pioneer I did a video on this radio a while ago now if you look at the grills of these sets you'll notice that the early 888 has a plain grill large knob here attaching the tuning dial and slotted screws as opposed to these sort of Phillips like screws here on the later model the Canadian Marconi company radio has the double slotted screws they're not really Phillips screws you can see a normal Phillips screwdriver would not fit in there it's a little hard to read but you can see Emerson Radio and Phonograph Corporation Jersey City New Jersey USA molded onto the back of this radio and this one But there's a blank spot on the back of this radio You'll notice that neither of these sets have the little plastic kickstand piece. It's not missing, it just never came with it. If you look at an old advertisement for the original Model 888, you'll notice it does not have that plastic kickstand. Before we take a look inside, let's hear the radio play. It does sound a bit distorted, but not too terrible. I can't stay on that station for too long, though. Because of YouTube's uh, copyright algorithms. More holiday music, sounds of the season, on the WNBF Sunday Polka Party with Steve Craw. Yeah, we're not going to stick around for that. Make a beat with it, not like Snap to whistle to make something happen. Coach, more on the young guy theme. Um, Julian Love has made plays for you since he's gone. So, not an outstanding performer, but not a bad performer either. You have to consider that this design is from around 1957 or 1958. It is an early one. These two holes at the bottom here are for the rare charger base accessory. I don't know if that was ever sold to the Canadian Marconi Company branding, but it was sold by Emerson under their name. These slots on the back were designed to be turned with a coin. I'll also take the back off of this model 888. See there's a little bit of corrosion damage there. And the sticker is not quite the same between the two. The chassis, however, is the same. See it's got the same number and the same letter code as well, ABC. I believe they removed letters as they made modifications to the chassis, but I'm not 100% sure what Emerson's system was. This radio was in somewhat rough shape when I got it and it did not work. The original battery tubes were missing, so I made this replacement here out of cardboard does have the original springs at the end here. Here's what the original battery holder would have looked like, minus the tape. It's two tubes of this kind of dense cardboard-like material. I'm not sure what that's called. And then a taped-down piece of paperboard there for insulation. That piece is still here, but not the original tape. The chassis is held in place by these two Phillips head screws and this nut here with a fiber washer underneath. Later sets used a nylon washer there instead just to avoid short circuits. See it has a good sized speaker that fills up most of the case and two big audio transformers at the bottom with the output transistors there. Uses a large size volume control now this socket here is not original and neither is that transistor. These transistors are connected directly collector to base and both of them were dead. So both of those are replacements. Here's what it should look like. There used to be a dual suction capacitor here. I replaced it with two individual ones. And there was a paper capacitor here which I replaced with a more modern Mylar one. Dead transistors are not that uncommon on these radios. Those early transistors were just not super reliable. 
And you have to remember that these sets were made in the 50s, so a lot of time has passed. Even if something was reasonably well made, nothing lasts forever. This just unscrews, and then you just take that off. It's a little tricky to do one-handed. You just pull that free. You can see it's yellowed a bit. That just pulls off. Then you just take this off, and these two screws out, and then the chassis will just lift free with the speaker attached to it. Thanks for watching.